officials. We want to begin the quarterback segment. Joining me now is Christian Barnard and Jason Nichols, ready to hit, I guess, our virtual gridiron here, guys. Huddle up. Here we go. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with you, Christian. Good to see you guys. Uh, when, you, when you heard this announcement and then you saw kind of what unfolded and continues to unfold, your first response. Yeah, so this is unfortunately the reality all over the country right now. So states have to quickly pivot to adjust to new uh, coronavirus caseload information. And obviously schools have to scramble and respond. I, I would say that it, it, what Larry Hogan is doing here is essentially just authorizing schools to reopen. Now, I, there was some urgency in his message where he wants to get kids back into school, but the important thing is that they have the flexibility to do this as safely and on their own timeline. Because if they all have to open at the same time or in the same way, that's where problems can really happen. Yeah, Jason, it seems to be a real messaging problem here, though, because I'll be honest, the moment I got the alert, because I was at home, and I'm on literally a virtual call with our school trying to learn their plans for opening, and I get this ping, and then we're texting my girlfriends, because she has a kid with special needs that actually goes to school in Montgomery County, and I live in Virginia, she's like, does this mean that, that the schools are opening? There was so much confusion here. Right. I think that's that's the big thing, but it's to be expected. These are different times that we're living in, as I think Christian just alluded to. Uh, nobody was prepared for, for this. I never thought this would happen. Um, so I think it was, I know I, I got the, the alert as well, and I was confused. You know, we were prepared or as prepared as you could be for virtual learning for, for my children um, for, you know, until... I believe it's January 28th in my county. And then all of a sudden you get this alert that schools can open. And so our superintendent had to send everyone a letter or an email, you know, saying, well, we're not changing, but we're gonna reevaluate in October. And I think it's still kind of, kind of up in the air and confusing, um, but we're all just gonna hunker down and prepare for virtual learning, prepare for it the way it was uh, originally stated that it's gonna go until January 28th. And then if there are some sort of changes or if some kids are gonna to go to school, which is one of the, the things that the superintendent in my county is talking about, that you know, at a certain point, some kids who need more in-person activity and, and learning will actually go, they'll be able to socially distance, uh, then you know, we'll, we'll prepare for that. But right now, I think most families should just prepare to, uh, for virtual learning to be actively involved in their kids' learning. And I think the one good thing that's gonna come out of this is parents are more actively engaged in their kids' learning process. I think it's actually mm -hmm. happened for me. I think it's happened for a lot of other families. Mm -hmm. Christian, but what about what we kind of heard from, what we did hear from the governor who said, you know, these schools should be able to adapt uh, to acting more swiftly to the, the metrics as they continue to change. He, he even mentioned that the easy thing to do is just to stick with the plan that's put in place. The hard thing to do is to adjust and, and get the kids back inside learning one-on-one -on -one where he, he believes, in, and a lot of people, quite frankly, believe they need to be to get the best benefit of, of their education. I don't know that it's easy to say that this is an easy thing to adapt to. I mean, what we're going to see is that the schools that are opening first across the country, uh, leaders are going to be looking to see how that's worked. So how is that, has that been safe for families? Have kids adapted well? I mean, we see all sorts of polls uh, about how families have pretty mixed feelings about going back to school, about how kids are scared. And so I don't think it's quite fair to say that, oh, this is something that's easy. I can change the timeline kind of uh, on a whim and then expect schools to follow suit. I mean, especially because all summer uh, there have been all sorts of things that are up in the air as far as federal aid, as far as uh, what where the coronavirus is going in general. I mean, let's say we just see a resurgence in cases and some of these early uh, reopenings. That's going to totally throw a wrench in everyone's timeline again. So I think that some of these districts in Maryland that are just going to stay the course for the next few months and then reevaluate from there, they're being smart about this because they've already seen the plans pivot several times over the mm -hmm. summer. Yeah, and Jason, real quick as we wrap, um, what do parents need right now? What is at the core of what we need? Uh, I think what, what we need is, of course, more uh, clear direction, more uh, consistency from everyone, 
Um, and I think a lot of, I, I don't want to forget the, the parents who actually need, and children, who need more resources. You know, um, uh, that's going to be a big thing is, does everybody have a computer? Does everybody have a, you know, a, a, a laptop? Does, is everybody prepared for virtual learning? So that's the big thing that I think that we need. I think this, is, this could very well expose a lot of uh, income inequality and wealth inequality in a lot of families and schools have to make up the difference there. So I hope that they are getting every family prepared in that way. Uh, so many moving parts. Christian and Jason, thank you so much for weighing in and joining our Monday morning quarterback session this morning and good luck to you guys.